Thyroidectomy is removal of parts, usually one half or all of the thyroid glands, which is a very important gland that's at the base of the neck. The thyroid is uh, the regulator of our metabolic rate. So if it is underactive, the body processes tend to slow down. If it is overactive, it tends to speed up. So it's very important, you know, for health to have uh, normal thyroid function. Thyroidectomy um, or removal of the thyroid gland is essentially done for three main reasons. It may be done because the thyroid develops benign nodules, which causes the thyroid to enlarge uh, and form something which is what we call a goiter. Goiter just means a big thyroid. It's not a diagnosis of itself. And the commonest cause of a large thyroid would be lots of nodules. So it's known as a multinodular goiter. And that's more common when people are living in areas of low iodine deficiency. And it produces symptoms in terms of uh, a lump in the neck. Uh, people are concerned uh, about the appearance of the neck cosmetically. It, it is uh, a great concern to them. And if it's very large, it can also lead to swallowing problems, compressive symptoms around the windpipe. Um, and that is the main reason for removing a thyroid gland. If it's overactive, uh, the three different causes of overactive in the thyroid gland, you can have an autonomous nodule, that's where one nodule is producing too much thyroid hormone. You can have overactivity in the gland in general that's associated with lots of nodules within the thyroid gland, and that's called Plummer's disease. And finally, you've got Graves' disease, where you get a global increase in thyroid hormone production because the white cells of the body stimulate the thyroid gland to produce these thyroid hormones. In terms of the surgery, uh, it essentially will remove, uh, it will determine whether we remove half or all of them. And then the final reason, of course, for removing the thyroid gland is for cancer. And occasionally that can be removal of part or one half of the thyroid gland. On other occasions, it will be removal of all of the gland and also the lymph nodes that uh, drain that gland. There are three main reasons for patients undergoing thyroid surgery. The first is for cancer, and that usually presents with a painless lump within the thyroid gland. It can also present with lymph node metastases because the commonest cause of thyroid cancer is papillary thyroid cancer, and that has a propensity to spread to lymph nodes, it's more common in women, uh, and it has a very good prognosis. There are other types of cancers also where surgical treatment um, is appropriate, because thyroid cancer by and large is a surgical pathology and the treatment is surgical. So that's the first reason why patients may require a thyroidectomy. We've also got the cosmetic and compressive symptoms that can be associated with a large thyroid that's associated with lots of nodules within the thyroid gland. So as the nodules grow, the thyroid also grows with the nodules and it produces a large swelling in the neck, which is known as a goiter. And that has cosmetic concerns for patients. And it can also be associated with compressive symptoms, such as having subtle problems with swallowing or a feeling of tightness around the central uh, compartment of the neck. When the thyroid slips down in the chest, it can also lead to quite significant problems with breathing. And the final reason for thyroidectomy is if the thyroid is overactive. There are three different causes of thyrotoxicosis. There's Graves, which is an autoimmune condition where the white cells produce antibodies that stimulate the thyroid. And surgery is just one way of treating thyrotoxicosis due to Graves' disease. There's also an autonomous nodule. So you can have a solitary nodule, uh, which is producing too much thyroid hormone. And surgery is often the best way of treating that rather than some other alternative uh, therapy. And finally, in association with lots of nodules or a multinodular goiter, again, uh, that can be associated with thyrotoxicosis. And when we see patients with that type of picture, they're often elderly and they often present also with uh, problems with their heart in terms of abnormal beats known as atrial fibrillation. 
Not everyone with thyroid pathology requires surgery, but thyroid cancer is a surgical pathology. Surgery is the primary modus operandi, primary choice of treating the patient. It is a surgical disease. Uh, in terms of thyrotoxic goiters or the overactive thyroid, there are alternatives, there's medical treatment. Many of these conditions such as Graves disease may burn themselves out. And if it's a small goiter, um, then radioiodine may offer an alternative to surgery. Uh, and then there's, of course, there is surgery. And there are advantages and disadvantages to either approach. A lot of it will de depend on the social circumstances of the patient, patient preference. Um, Graves is very much more a condition that you see in women and young women and they have young families. And if you treat that with radioiodine, that means a period of isolation from their children. It causes quite a lot of uh, social impacts for them and they, they don't tend to like that. So many will opt for surgery to avoid that uh, social inconvenience. Um, but there are advantages to radioiodine just as much as there are disadvantages to surgery and advantages. So it really has to be shared with the patient and you come up to a shared uh, decision process on outlining all the options to the patients, describing what the advantages and disadvantages of each approach is, and then the patient can decide with the help uh, of the consultant. All surgeries have, has complications, so there are the generic uh, complications that are associated with all surgery. So with thyroid surgery, there's an instance of bleeding, there's an instance of infection, it's low, about 1% of patients on average will have to return to theatre because of bleeding. Infection is low, it's no greater than 2% because the neck has a very good blood supply, so that's uh, not as common as we would see in surgery elsewhere. Specific complications with regard to thyroidectomy depend on whether you're removing half of the thyroid or all of the thyroid glands. If you are removing half, then 80% of patients won't have any problems with thyroid hormone replacement, but 20% may go low. And we would decide which category that patient falls in by doing a thyroid function six weeks after the surgery. You have parathyroid glands. You have two on each side, which are very important in controlling and regulating blood calcium. If you just remove half of the thyroid, patients will never have any problems with calcium control following the surgery. And also after one-sided surgery, you've only got one nerve to the voice box to be concerned about. Uh, if you do a total thyroidectomy, that brings the calcium glands into the equation. And there are certain uh, cohorts of patients. If you have a large goiter, uh, if you have Graves disease, then about 20% of these patients may end up temporarily requiring vitamin D and calcium support to keep the calcium in the normal range. But the incidence of long-term uh, requirements of vitamin D and calcium uh, support should be certainly less than 5% in a surgical practice. And then finally, there's the nerve to the voice box. There's a very small chance of temporary and even a smaller chance of permanent injury to the nerve to the voice box, which may affect the voice. It doesn't always affect the voice. A third of patients that have a problem with the nerve to the larynx after thyroid surgery do not have any voice symptoms at all. So, but some do, and that may or may not require further treatment. But the, in the long term, most of those injuries get better. They're due to traction at the time or stretching of the nerve at the time of surgery. So those are the four main complications that can be associated with thyroidectomy. Uh, hemithyroidectomy, 20% will go on to need thyroxin. 80% will not. There's only one nerve to worry about, but there's still an instance of temporary impairment nerve injury. You don't have to worry about the calcium glands when you just remove half of the thyroid gland. And of course, the generic bleeding infection. For a total, you've got bleeding infection, you've got two nerves, the voice box, again, with the risk of temporary and permanent nerve injury, which may or may not alter the voice, which may or may not require treatment. And then, and then you've got the, the calcium glands as well, which can be affected temporarily and rarely permanently. Thyroidectomy is not a painful operation. Uh, privately, I don't uh, 
prescribe any painkillers for patients uh, after a thyroidectomy. Uh, most, if they need anything at all, will need paracetamol, neurofen, maybe for 24, possibly 48 hours. So it's not a painful operation. Uh, the technique that I use are dissolvable sutures. I glue uh, the skin so they can shower, they can get it wet. There's no need for any dressings. There's no uh, patient care required to the incision, which is obviously convenient for the patient. And I don't use something called a drain, which is a plastic tube underneath the skin, uh, which can also lead to uh, more scarring. Uh, and it's also very uncomfortable for the patient. So there's very good evidence, grade A, level one evidence, that drains don't have any role to play in thyroid surgery. But nonetheless, a lot of thyroid surgeons do use drains. It, it comes down to, to surgical preference. In terms of return to work, I would say hemithyroidectomy will be back to work after a week. Uh, everyone can return to the gym, physical activities after a week. Total thyroidectomy may take a little bit longer, uh, depending on the calcium, uh, but certainly everyone would be uh, back to work after a two week period, most after seven days.